Hello and welcome to Mission Wilderness. In this video, we're testing the theory that the Vikings came to America 100 years before Columbus. And not only did they just come to America, some speculate that they came all the way to the interior of North America, and that there's some evidence of that right here in Northern Minnesota's Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness. In this video, we are traveling up the Kelso River, near to its source, where that evidence lies. I hope that by the end of this video, you're qualified to judge with me whether or not that quote, evidence, unquote, of a Viking expedition to North America is authentic or if it's something else. As we paddle up this river, I wanna provide you with the evidence that leads some to speculate that the Vikings made it all the way here to the interior of North America in about the 1300s. That starts with who the Vikings were. Now they were, they were Northmen, they were from Scandinavia and they raided each other and then eventually once they got good longships that allowed them to travel overseas, they raided all over Northern Europe and Eastern Europe. And eventually they colonized Greenland. They did that in about 900, 1000 AD, somewhere around there. And it's based on the fact that they made it as far west as Greenland that some speculate that they might have in fact gone all the way to continental North America. And that question then drives a search for some evidence of that fact. And so the evidence that exists is not great. And the physical evidence is even scarcer than the speculation. So there is evidence that the Vikings colonized Greenland about 1000 AD and had a settlement there that lasted for several hundred years. And in the Viking sagas, which are a text, there is a discussion of people from Greenland traveling all the way to a place where grapes grew, Vinland. But what scholars point out is that the place that grows grapes that is nearest to Greenland is continental North America. So based upon that literature, people speculate that the Vikings made it all the way to North America, to coastal North America. But then, fast forward 900 years, and there's some evidence to suggest that the Vikings made it all the way to the interior of North America. In the 1960s, scholars found an outpost that was attributed to the Viking peoples in Newfoundland at a place called Lance de Meadows. And scholars don't think it was a settlement, but they think it was an outpost where Vikings came to fix their ships, possibly as a launching off point for further expeditions. But again, very little physical evidence of that. The only physical evidence that exists there is um, scholars have found archeological evidence of butternuts at the settlement. And the argument there is that butternuts only grow in North America, therefore the Vikings must have come all the way to continental North America. But again, that's also speculative evidence because they could have traded for those butternuts just as easily. So that's not conclusive evidence. But then in the 1890s, a Swedish farmer in southwestern Minnesota found a, a stone on his property with Scandinavian writing on it called runes. And so that stone has become known as the Kensington Stone or the Kensington Rune Stone. And uh, scholars read what was written on the Kensington Rune Stone. And what it says is that Vikings had traveled all the way here to the interior of North America in the 1300s. But other scholars say that the writing is not authentic, that it's too modern, that it would not that some of the symbols that were used would not have been used in the 1300s. So most people say that the Kensington Rune Stone is also not valid as a piece of evidence. So then we are left with the Viking Dolmen. And the Viking Dolmen is located here on the Kelso River. That's where we're headed now. We're headed to take a look at the Viking Dolmen. And some speculate that it's a burial monument that was constructed by Vikings. So a dolmen is a Celtic word for table. And dolmens are not unique to the Vikings, but are unique to an era of human history. And that's the period of human history when humans were transitioning from hunter-gatherers to farmers. And during that period, you find, wherever you find farming and early farming, you find these burial monuments. And these burial monuments 
basically are like giant tables with huge, huge rocks as pillars and then a huge rock as a tabletop. And then a chamber is formed underneath the table where you could probably put a person. And it's suggested that if you put a person in that chamber, you're probably burying them in there. And then it's a monument. So people come and they visit it, just like a gravestone or something. And so these were, these were all over the place. Um, the highest concentration is actually in Korea, but there are quite a few in Northern Europe and there's a couple of very prominent ones in Sweden. But so we know what a dolmen should look like. It should be pretty, it should be big enough to fit a human underneath it. And it should be big. Now that may not conclusively prove that the Vikings were here, but it is contributory evidence. And it is being used by people who speculate that the Vikings in fact did come here. So it's worth taking a look at. So we are continuing to go up the Kelso River, coming right to the Viking Dolmen. And then at that point, we can look at it, examine its features, and determine whether or not it's an authentic dolmen, and whether or not that might be evidence for the hypothesis that the Vikings were here 100 years before Columbus. So here we are. We are nearing the source of the Kelso River. Looking around here, you can tell the river spreads way out like a giant watershed. There are big hillocks of rock around here, and I know that the Viking Dolmen is on one of these hillocks of rock. It's very picturesque. You certainly get the feeling that you're moving to the source of something. In our case, it's the source of some speculation about the Vikings' visit to America. Oh yeah, this, at this turn of the river, you really get the feeling that you're coming right to the end of it. Well, the dolmen might be right over here. This looks like it might be it. Let me go ahead and take a look. Well, it would seem that that was not it. Just a uh, red herring, just a distraction. So we will continue. I've actually never been to the Viking Dolmen, so this is the first time for both of us. But uh, I've seen pictures of it, and it seems like this should be around the place that it's at based on where I find the pictures. But we'll keep looking. Victory! We have found the dolmen. It's at this beaver dam. So I think I remember that. It's at this first beaver dam on the Kelso River as you're going up the beaver dam. And so it's a spot where you have to get out of the canoe anyway to portage up. And I see it now. I see the Viking dolmen. It's in our sights. Uh, or should I say, the allegedly Viking dolmen. Well, there you have it. That's the Viking dolmen. <laughs> That's the first time I've ever actually seen it. And uh, to evaluate it as a piece of evidence that showed that the Vikings were here, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I thought I was going to be more disappointed than I was. Um, you know, really feel like it was kind of a lot of wishful thinking. But looking at it, you know, I didn't think you could put anything underneath there. But you might be able to get something underneath there. You know, maybe a relic of something. Maybe some bones. You know, maybe in a pinch it might have served as a burial monument in a pinch probably you know for an expedition on the move i don't know why an expedition comes up the kelso river it doesn't seem like it's a major route to anywhere but who knows you know and uh you know it doesn't really match the description of dolmens that you read about it's uh table like table light really it's the the support stones are not large no and the top stone is not very flat it doesn't give the impression of table. So it's a little small, doesn't really give the impression of table. I don't know. 
I mean, it's interesting to speculate on such things. You combine it with the Kensington stone, you combine it with butternuts at Lance de Meadows, with, and the Viking sagas that mention places where grapes grow, that Vikings have visited to, and the fact that they were in Greenland about a thousand years ago, and about probably 300 years before it's speculated that they would have come here, or at least according to the Kensington ruin. But I don't know. I guess that uh, you'll have to make up your own mind on that. And whether or not you think that the dolmen here, or whatever this structure is, is a sign of a Viking expedition that came here more than a hundred years before Columbus even discovered the Bahamas. I don't know. There's also the possibility that some sort of pranksters with the Triple C, that is the Civilian Conservation Corps, would have constructed it back in the 19... oh, I suppose the 30s. Well, that was when the CCC was up here. They built a lot of portage trails and they built a fire tower that's right behind me here. And uh, the trail actually to the fire tower is right here on the other side of this dam. Some people speculate that the Triple C constructed this monument here as a, as a marker for the trail that goes to the fire tower, which they would have had to take, you know, multiple times in many ways. I mean, you can imagine that it would have been an easy way to tell somebody how to get here, go up the Kelso River until you see the Table Rock, and then right across the Table Rock is the trail. So a lot of people think it might just have been somebody in the Triple C. But that's, you know, that's a theory that could be tested. You could go back and you could research who was in the Triple C, when that fire tower was built, and then you could try to find any sort of memoir that they have, or any kind of diaries that might be in existence. And you could really go to town on that hypothesis. The Viking one, a little harder to demonstrate directly, but it's fun to think about. But I don't know, it's interesting. I tell you what, if you liked this video, why don't you like it? And if you like videos like this, you know, why don't you hit that subscribe button and smash that notification bell. As for me, that's the conclusion of this mission. I appreciate you coming along with me, and if you have any thoughts on that dolman back there, or whatever that is, um, please do, leave them in the comments. Or if you just want to, you know, give me a shout out. Tell me you like what I'm doing, or if you've got some suggestions for videos you'd like me to make in the future, please do go ahead and comment. Thanks again for watching, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video when we go deeper into the wilderness.